Tanqua Art Space 2023. Sesonke. 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 Yes. <laughs> so it would be great if you could introduce yourself, mm. tell us who you are, what mm. you are doing. Kosi, uh, my name is Sesonke. This is the name that our parents gave us. Uh, we are from a village in Mtata called New Pain Location. Mm, my whole life I've been trying to understand what is this thing around my name? Why am I called Sesonke? And this name in Isikosa means we are together or we are one. And having been born in a polygamous family, my father had three wives, my mother being the third wife. Uh, the 17 of us, um, the 16th and second last born. So I was like, hey, I, maybe this thing, it means that all of us, we are one here, this one big family. Um, but the more I grew, I started asking beyond that, what does it mean? I encountering different people and different ways of doing things. And I'm like, but what does it mean that uh, Sisonke? So I grew to uh, a space where within my own consciousness I feel I reached a place of unity where there's no longer any separation between myself and the next person, between all that exists in creation. Um, and from this space we feel now our current uh, expression or creation stems from that. So we work with uh, various uh, modalities um, over the past few years we've been privileging sound um, and also the visual color frequency space as a spaces for creation but also as spaces for imagination, for healing, for remembering. Um, we make indigenous instruments, uh, we prefer to call them as um, indigenous technologies because these are configurations that do not only deal with the so-called physical world but they're also interfacing with the celestial and also realms that we cannot see. So our task beyond uh, making or creating sounds is also creating the technologies that make the sounds so that the body and also the mind and the cells can also remember uh, who one is and why therefore they are here. Um, I am a person who in Isikosa or within uh, Tembo cosmology is known as Ikecha. Uh, Ikecha is a person who has been called by the ancestors to do uh, healing work and we are choosing to frame it that way because the work takes various forms um, it is an ancient system of healing uh, the healing arts it is the healing arts or it is understanding um, the task of healing being in itself a kind of art form um, so we've been initiated into that practice and now the name we were given by our ancestors is Kanyisa and Kanyisa mm -hmm. means the one who brings light or one who must bring light so what was the moment you described that you understood there is no separation between you and whatever else is out there was there a crucial moment for this understanding or mm. was there a special kind of click mm. where you said, wow, I got it? Cozy. Um, we would say our whole life, even as a kid, you know, would always feel like, hey, there's something underlying here, even though we couldn't really make the connections at the time. But it was 2012, uh, the year where we feel that a click or bang, <laughs> a radical shift um, happened in our consciousness. Um, it is a time where we truly feel we are awakened to who we are and why we're here and what it is that we need to do. But this time was fraught with much pain, much anxiety, much confusion. 
and we're almost guided into sitting with ourselves. Um, some people call this space the shadow or the dark parts of ourselves, um, the sub or unconscious mind. But all the things from our experience having grown up were resurfacing. All of the things that I had left unattended, I had not healed, I had not paid attention to. All my fears, all my pains, all my resentments as well. Everything was just coming to the surface. I was like, yo, it is <laughs> how I'm <laughs> Right now, what am I going to do? <laughs> I had absolutely no preparation for that moment. Were you in some kind of community? Because mm. you keep saying we, we, we. Go see. <laughs> Perhaps um, that is the second step we'll get to now. Uh, in now, the recognition of the self, not as a, an isolated individual thing but also a composite that is made by a community and this community even not extending to beyond your own physical being but the different organs the different cells the genetic makeup which then also brings the ancestors and all those who came with make us what we are so this is why we prefer to say we uh, <laughs> but then before now reaching this space um we had to undo all the layers. We had to deconstruct. We had to ask ourselves, why are we feeling these kinds of things? Do we still identify with these things? Do we even need to be carrying all of this pain? <laughs> so we're dissolving, disintegrating whatever idea we had of self then was completely shattered. Um, at this time, uh, we were a software development student. I was doing my second year, really interested in AI, really interested in apps and all of those things. <laughs> but it feels like the cosmic clock hit and said, there's another path for you. And it begins with opening your heart. Um, and that's when I began to really surrender to expression because before then I was repressing, I was holding, I was binding. But now I needed to open my heart. I needed to allow myself to feel all the things I've always wanted to feel and know that I'm here right now in this world and I don't know when else I'll be here. So let us allow ourselves to open our hearts and just be the magnitude of what I can feel. So... What happened to artificial intelligence on the way? <laughs> it has now returned us to the source of what even that is. Um, because now when we, maybe what we were saying about the indigenous technologies and also the ancient technologies is that they are aware of these realms. But then they are interfacing with the body as the first primal technological source that we can use to, one, uh, leave our bodies to travel to other spaces, um, but also receive information from other spaces where already it is organized. Some call it source, some call it God. But now AI is positioning itself as the space where all the information exists. But then it's only a particular kind of information that is there. Mm. So it feels like uh, the call from our ancestors was to return to the original design and system of being in this planetary system and how to work with the grid, how to work with nature, how to work with various uh, spaces that are energy zones that hold very potent information for us in our healing and work with those spaces. And this is probably why we're also finding ourselves here and having this conversation. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, yes. Uh, so what brought you here? What mm -hmm. created interests mm -hmm. that you joined this Tankwa artscape? Oh, see, one of the main tasks we feel uh, presently we've been given is to re-energize the energy grid of the earth through songs or through frequency or through vibration um, using some of these technologies that our ancestors have created because the spaces that we are in um, hold a lot of information 
and some of the information that we tend to tap into mostly is that of the pain, is that of the violence, it's the, the stagnant mm -hmm. energy that the earth is holding that also does not allow us to move on because we keep repeating the same patterns, the same diseases, the same conditionings, everything. Mm -hmm. So now the task we've been given is to visit particular sites and bring particular instruments or technologies and transmit particular sounds and messages that speak with the earth, that plead with the earth. Um, so a lot, we've been traveling um, in more vegetative spaces we can call, um, close to rivers and mountains and forests. And in those spaces we have received and felt the energy and the song and the, what needs to be done in those spaces but we've been wondering but also even spaces that we consider as deserts are also part um, of, of, of this grid it's important that also those spaces are cultivated so Tangwa presented itself as the most perfect space um, to be able to have a vast open space to be able to dream on but also to surrender to and to listen to it and to its rhythm and to its pace and really just allow the being to be in this vibrational field of this space and then allow whatever expressions wanting to to come forth from that um, but also the skies the skies the skies the skies here are amazing at night um, so even that for me is opening not only just internally but also <sighs> so yesterday evening during our circle time the mm. question not the question but uh, the remark came up why do ha why do we have to come to such a space mm. to open up mm. why can't mm. we you know just be open mm. in general Mm. Why does it need such a space? Kosi. Mm. Mm. We feel particularly uh, that there are some people who are tasked with this work of opening up spaces, of shifting them, and opening portals so that others who maybe are not open can access and to be able to enter. Um, but these people also need spaces that will also open them up even further, um, that can also be able to hold them um, so that they can be really vulnerable and access parts of themselves that they've never witnessed before, so that now upon returning to the spaces where they come from, they can start re-imprinting and um, mm. using the things that have been learned. Um, we feel... Um, because we as these beings that we are we are called artists you know we're called many things in this age um, but we we constantly need to be cared for um, and the land does that um, and space and time just to be allowed to be uh, allows for whatever distillations need to happen internally through us to happen so that when we have to channel the healing because essentially that's what it is uh, we're channeling the healing um, each one of us whether we are aware that it is medicine that we are doing or not but it is uh, doing something to us and it is that thing that we must keep sharing uh, we must keep mm. sharing so I feel like spaces like these are revitalizing or refocusing and um, perhaps even tuning us to where we need to go go see Okay, so uh, you applied mm. for this residency program with what kind of an idea mm. did you come here and has it changed mm. in the first two, three days now that we are here? And if it has changed, why? Mm. So, see, uh, the idea that we had was to maybe overall is to work with the energy of death and rebirth. Um, the residency started now after the equinox 
and here now in the southern hemisphere we understand this this time where we are getting into the darkness we're getting into the cycle of death um, if we're looking at the orbit of the sun using the circle um, as a cosmological symbol we are entering the underworld but also while we are here there's also a moon there's a new moon that's going to emerge so those two things for me are very curious um, so our work is to find a way to interface with the heavens um, with the sun with the moon and also with the stars but to encode that energy here on the physical earth using um, a stone circle and then inside that stone circle to have a spiral that moves inside and then upon reaching that spiral inside um, whoever is taking that journey will meet us there sitting in the center where we'll have various uh, sound devices um, to allow them to get into a deeper dreaming journey inward um, so that they can access what they need to access for themselves in that moment um, the overall feeling of the work hasn't changed but what has changed now it is the how it is done um, that is the one thing that we are meditating on um, we still feel the intention but now perhaps what we had thought <laughs> Well, it's going to be something the land is saying look at me I'm like this come do but now also having to contend or meditate on what does the space also allow like what are the boundaries what are the thresholds of what can actually be done um, it's just those two major things but I'm enjoying the sounds that have been flowing every night every morning and not feeling the need to capture them but just to allow that these are the sounds that are coming in this moment and it's all right mm. <laughs> so the last thing if you have five words mm. to describe the space here mm. what would these five words be mm. infinite still space resides within <laughs> Thank you. I hope we continue the conversation. We're looking forward to it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>